How you doing guys? This is Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com. This video is actually something I'm doing in conjunction with JJ Johnson of Reality Survival and Shay over at Prepper Logic. We're going to be doing our, you know, semi-regularly at least, a live stream collaborations. And what we also want to do in conjunction is pick a topic, each make videos on that topic without knowing what the other person is going to say. See what we've come up with independently, what's the same, what's different, and then we can talk about it some more on the live stream. So this video is will be like a week before our next live stream, roughly. The subject of this video is the 10 things to do first immediately after she hit the fan event. Now, there are going to be some caveats to this. Obviously, without knowing exactly what this event is supposed to be, the answer is going to be a little more broad. And uh, because it could vary wildly depending on what's going on. Obviously, if there's civil unrest or an economic collapse situation, you're going to do things a little bit differently in a different order than if there was a nuclear uh, event close by or the total grid loss EMP event, or some kind of pandemic, you know, it's going to, it's going to make a difference. But these are just the general things, you know, as specific as possible of what you should do in most situations immediately after realizing there's a shit hit the fan event. And the, the other, um, kind of a rule for what I'm coming up with here is that it's a very serious event. You know, I'm not talking about a hurricane type situation or a job loss or something like that. I'm talking about a really serious event that at least has the potential for massive grid down if it hasn't happened already. You know, something like an EMP event or massive civil unrest, economic, like some sort of really sudden economic collapse, you know, a massive pain, something like that, a really big event. One more thing to consider is that these aren't in any specific order because, of, like I said, there's a lot of different situations that could crop up that would make you do these in a separate order. Maybe some of them not at all, but I put them in a general order of the really important ones kind of going to the sort of less important ones that you would do if you have more time, but there's no exact order, so don't fret about that. One of the things you should do really quickly when you realize things are going serious is to arm yourself. Bam! I always uh, mention in these movies how all the characters just are do a terrible job of maintaining, you know, some method of self-defense, even knives and guns and things like that. When things have gotten really serious, it's incredibly important to have a way to defend yourself because people are going to get desperate. Regardless of what the exact situation is, there's a possibility that you're going to have to exercise self-defense in some manner. So I think once you realize this situation is happening, you should arm yourself and stay armed, whether that's multiple guns, guns and knives, to the best of your ability, whatever you can do, arm yourself and stay armed. Number two is I would say to do any disaster specific preparations or actions that you need to take. If there is an NBC event or a nuclear event that means maybe taking your potassium iodide, putting on a gas mask. You know, if there's a pandemic, it'd be taking those precautions. If it's a weather event, doing those specific precautions. So there's going to be some things that are really important for each event, but the, the, where there's not going to be some overlap. So this is really the only one on the list that doesn't apply to all events because there's going to be some very important things that you have to do regardless of what the situation is, and but they're going to be different for each situation. So at this point, once you've made sure you're secure physically from any crazy people, and these, like I said, the order could be switched. If it's a, a nuclear event, you're probably going to throw a gas mask or something on or before you necessarily grab a weapon. But these are things that you'd all be doing really quickly. So there's a lot of items that you're not necessarily going to know exactly what you need to do until the event happens. And this this is the time to do those specific um, actions for that specific shit hit the fan event. Number three is secure your family members and loved ones. If they're in the immediate area, that means getting them ready, armed or whatever you need to do, doing their disaster specific preparations as well. As, it, as selfish as it may seem, you want to take care of yourself first in these situations, especially if you are the primary kind of prepper of the group, because just like they mentioned on the airplanes, if something happens to you, then they're totally screwed. So even though your instincts for the people that you care about will be to do things for them first, you need to make sure that you're in a position to help them. So that's why doing step one and two for yourself first is probably usually going to be more important than go about securing your family members. That can mean going to get them somewhere. If it's uh, if they're stuck at work or something, you need to act quick. If there's like a EMP event or something like that, if they're in the house or a house is nearby, obviously getting them ready to go is important. If they're states and, uh, and or farther away, there might not be anything you can do at the current moment, but you need to evaluate that and make sure they're secure. This could op op go for 
you know, pets or animals that you care about a lot too, but specifically your family members and things like that. Step number four would be to kind of a dual combo is to go into security mode mentally and then physically secure your location, whether that means, you know, making sure all your doors are locked, possibly even barricaded, windows, you know, if you have any way of securing them as well, gates locked, driveways maybe, or, or um, roadways maybe even blocked, things like that, depending on the situation, obviously, because along with the arming yourself, this is going to prevent a lot of craziness if you, um, you know, if this stuff happens suddenly, it's going to take a few minutes at least if you're prepared, much longer if you're not, to physically secure your location. And like I said, mentally going into security mode means realizing that this type of uh, danger is out there and shifting your thinking that you're not in an everyday situation anymore. Part of that goes along with staying armed, but just realizing that anyone you see could be a potential threat at this point. It doesn't mean blasting anyone that you see, but just realizing that you're not in a normal day-to-day -day situation anymore and evaluating all your surroundings and all your situations in that mindset. Number five, I would say, is to collect whatever resources or consolidate resources in any way that you can, given the situation. If that means charging all your electronic devices if you still have power, if the water is still working, collecting as much water as possible, assuming that you don't already have some sort of super plentiful water source. You know, anything you can do, if you're at the store or you're out and the you know, EMP happens or something like that, maybe swinging into a store and trying to buy something with you know as much stuff as you can with cash on the way home, things like that. Just anything you can do to last minute scrape together as many resources as possible while they're still available in a way that doesn't you know impede with the other steps of you know giving up security and things like that. Because ideally, as preppers, you would have a fairly significant amount of resources already prepared. But usually, especially in the event of a severe shift of fan scenario, none of us are really at the level that we would really want to be if we had, you know, a magic wand. So the um, ability to, you know, get some last minute resources, especially, you know, perishable ones you might not have been able to store and uh, electricity and fuel and things like that is really beneficial if you can do that. Number six, I would say, is to enter safety mode. And this is goes along kind of with security mode. It's more of a mindset shift. That means that now that you're in a serious event, you have to realize that things that would otherwise simply be a nuisance can be incredibly serious if not life-threatening. That means any injury, anything like that, any accident, breakage of things, all that stuff would be very, very devastating potentially in a shift of advanced scenario. So that means you've got to get kind of nerdy about safety and um, things of that nature once you realize you're in these events. That means if you're doing any sort of physical work, wear as much personal protection equipment as you can, gloves, eye protection, whatever. Don't take risks physically, like jumping down from things. Crawl down carefully. Don't step on what you can step over. Don't step over what you can walk around or that kind of thing. Because a rolled ankle, you know, a cut to your hand, you know, an eye injury, anything like that could just be incredibly devastating. The effects of it are multiplied to a tremendous degree in a serious situation, especially if, like I mentioned before, you are the primary kind of prepared person in your group or even more so a loner you know, one or two people in your place, your physical capabilities are all you have at that point. So you really need to maintain a high level of safety. And that goes for using your equipment as well. You don't want to abuse anything that could be broken. You want to really be careful with everything that you're using, not do anything that could, you know, the way you carry stuff, you don't want to drop anything, all that stuff. You just need to shift into that mindset of how important resources are, how important it is to stay safe, and you know, maintain your uh, physical integrity and keep that stuff in mind as you're going through all these steps. So shifting to that safety mindset is super important in a disaster situation. Number seven, I would say, is to maximize readiness of the things that you already have ready to go. Sort of goes along with what I mentioned before, you know, like the security and physically hardening your location if possible. But you know, staging things, getting ready to bug out if you need to, which could be certainly be imminent in a, a serious disaster situation. Even those of us who, you know, are planning to have the ability to bug out are mostly not totally ready to do it within the next 30 seconds if that happened. And if you are, congratulations, that's amazing. But I know I'm not um, totally ready to just run out the door this very instant. I would, I would want at least a few minutes to get ready. So tr do those things while you have a chance, if you can, to prepare to either bug out 
you know, gassing up vehicles, if you can, loading magazines, staging equipment in different areas. You know, if you're living a normal day-to-day -day life, your equipment's probably not going to be in the same locations and in the same kind of formatting or staging situation that it would be if you knew something was going to happen. Well, now in this scenario, you know something has happened. And so if you have the chance and you've done these other steps, go ahead and stage your equipment, load your magazines, unlock certain things where equipment might be, or get it out in an area where it can be more accessible for first aid equipment, defense equipment, anything, communications equipment, things like that. You might have some radios and things like that packed away in a Faraday cage. Whether or not the EMP has just happened, then you're going to probably need that equipment, so you don't want to take a whole lot of time getting to it right when you need it. Do it now if you have a chance. Number eight is uh, either open lines of communication or collect info on the situation. This could be as simple as turning on the radios that I mentioned in the previous point, or if you have any sort of internet or phone communications, maybe trying to collect some information that way. But whatever you do, make sure you have the at least have the ability, you know, turn the radio on to whatever disaster stations are on our government uh, communication stations. For any you know broadcast to tell what's going on depends on what the situation is obviously but having the ability to get more information and more intel about the current situation and communicate with people potentially even in only like a one-way direction getting information from them could be extremely helpful and it can be sort of passive too especially if you're just talking about turning on a radio but having that ability could be a huge benefit you know if you get and even any little piece of information in a serious situation could be a great benefit Step number nine, I would say to hydrate. And you could, you know, put other things under this as well. Maybe take care of any minor little injuries you have or things like that. But take care of your body in a way that if you have a moment's notice, you can't, you'll be ready to go. You know, you, a lot of people, if you've just woken up or, you know, you're not drinking that much throughout the day and all of a sudden you're launched into a strenuous situation, maybe you do have to bug out or something like that and you're already dehydrated, it could be a serious problem. So if you have a, a second, you know, you've done these other steps, go ahead and Hydrate up, make sure you're well fueled, things like that. Maybe even eat a snack or something like that. And that goes into my last point for number 10, which is to consume all the perishable foods that you need to first, right away. Like if you've got done all these other things, there's a little bit of downtime or, you know, the eye of the storm kind of situation, assuming that there's a power outage, of course, go ahead and fuel yourself with any perishable food items because those aren't going to last anyway. So go ahead and if you know, you've got everything done, ready to go, you're just kind of sitting there, shit the fan situation, you still need to eat, go ahead and eat all the stuff that might go bad. Have yourself a big bacon feast if you've got some of that in the fridge. Drink your milk, eat the cheese, whatever you have in there that's going to go bad within a couple you know, days, if not hours. Go ahead and use that stuff first. Get a nice big meal in your system in case something does really, really get bad and you do have to bug out. Might not be able to eat for hours, maybe even days, depending on how serious the situation is. So get that hydration, step number nine, and then part of, you know, corollary to eating is eating specifically the things that might go bad or aren't going to last anyway, and that would be my tip number 10. So those are 10 things that I think you should do immediately after any sort of sh serious shit the van event. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the caveat is that whatever the specifics are of this, um, you know, supposed event could drastically change the list. So don't get too caught up in the minor details. That's why I stuck a lot with some kind of more um, vague. Not to, I didn't want to be too vague, obviously. You want specific, actionable tips, but I also want something that applies to almost every situation. And if you get really specific, it's not necessarily going to apply to every single situation. So let me know what you guys think. Check out um, JJ Johnson at Reality Survival. His video on the subject and Shay at Prepper Logic. Check out his video on the subject as well. I'm really excited to see what we've come up with and how, you know, what overlap there is, things we might disagree on, things like that. And then swing by his channel. I believe it'll be on his channel again, Reality Survival, for the live stream about a week, I think Sunday after this um, uh, video is uploaded. I think the 13th. Let me check that date. That's the tentative date for this, is that we're going to go on the 13th for our prepper round table, whatever you want to call it. Let me know what you guys think about these 10, what yours would be. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Okay, so the first very most important step that you need to do immediately after shit the fan is go grab your huge box of dryer lint that all preppers have and cram as much of it as you can into your pants, around your hip joints. It'll keep your joints warm and then you can pull it out to start emergency fires whenever you need to. Okay, I'm joking about that.
but I do have a box full of lint. 